Ronaldo and Romario, what a strike force. Ronaldo and Romario, two of the seven players in this Brazilian squad who ply their trade abroad. This is Dunga, who plays in Japan, and that's the newcomer to the team, Danielson. Well, I'll just switch to two midfield players by the looks of it. And he, I'm just looking at Leonardo. He's taking a pretty advanced position early on in this match. I don't know whether they're going to try and change him. He didn't quite get involved as much as he would have liked against the French. Here's Di Matteo to Vieri. And now Del Piero looking to trigger off a move from Vieri. Dino Baggio. And Roberto Carlos turned it away. It comes off Lombardo for a Brazilian throw-in. Well, the Italians are exactly as we thought. Lombardo's certainly playing right side, Maldini left. They're going in with Costa Curta as the spare man, and I think they've got to do that. When you play against Romario and Ronaldo, I think the Italians will like that safety valve of Costa Curta just 10, 15 yards behind at times. You wonder just how much of a smokescreen all the quotes from Paolo Maldini <laughs> that he was to play on the right actually were. This is Mauro Silva. This is Dunga, the man who scored what was effectively the winning penalty kick in the World Cup final, which Brazil won 3-2 on kicks after a goalless draw following 120 minutes. Dunga again. Mauro Silva, another of the players who played at Pasadena Rose Bowl. On the foot of Danielson was high, and it's an Italian free kick. Example there, we often talk about Brazilian skill and flair. Dunga, fast experience, the ball dropped in an area where he didn't want to just pull it down. Even the best players in the world are not shy in putting their foot through it if that's what's required. Brazil, who were on a really successful roll approaching this tournament until their last game before it, when they suffered that defeat against Norway nine days ago that really shook them up. Vieri looking for Del Piero, and Italy break through and get the lead after six minutes, and it's the man restored to the starting lineup who's got it, Alessandro Del Piero. Yeah, he gets the goal, but Vieri did all the work. An absolutely magnificent cross. And all it was saying was, please put me in. He makes a good run, first and foremost. And then he just comes back on his left side, very, very left-sided. Doesn't look, I'm putting it into the danger area. Not good covering by Cafu. Del Piero's on the inside of him. And I'll tell you what, it's an easy header from there. Down, gives Taffarel no chance. Six yards out, great start for the Italians. And it was the Juventus front two that did the trick for Italy. Siragi and Zola displaced tonight by Vieri and Del Piero, and it's that combination that has given Italy the lead here in Lyon. But now a Brazilian free kick. Great skill here. That's just crude from Baggio, to be fair. Guess who's going to take it? He's going to shoot from there, isn't he? <laughs> Nah, not the way he's shaping up. It's Roberto Carlos with a kick. Dunga. Aldair. Roberto Carlos again. Blocked by Lombardo. All the talk that there was about Roberto Carlos's spectacular free kick here last week. There was a lot of disenchantment at home that Brazil didn't manage to hold on to the lead it established. And there'll be further disenchantment if they fail to beat Italy here tonight. Brazilians straight off the back of this 
tournoi. They go into the Copa America, their first game in that competition, three days after they face England in Paris. I think that's fair. I mean, to be for the Brazil, I think that is something they are aiming towards. I mean, and this is a tournament that I'm sure Zagallo is using to try one or two things out, experiment just a little. He's given success here and success in the Copa America. I know what they'd choose. Here's Vieri, Del Piero again in the box. Can they combine again? Off target this time, but yet again, Vieri set up the opportunity for him. I think it's just typical of what I felt he could get at this defence. I said it right at the top. And I think the Italians are showing us where it's in between full-backs and centre-backs. They get caught forward a little, the full-backs. I think Vieri did brilliant there. That time he just didn't cross it blind. He had a little look up. You see him looking now. Where's my mate, he says. Where is he? And he plays a super ball to him. This is a disappointing finish. Maldini it is who's picked out Del Piero. Silvio Silva holding him up. And more reason why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's an area to explore against the Brazilians. I really do, because I don't think the centre backs are comfortable when they come out in the middle like that. It does leave them vulnerable. Time and again, even this match, the Italians have just knocked it down the side. Little ball in. Well, Del Piero or Vieri wants to run after it. They're getting the ball in really good areas. to furnish the likes of Lombardo, Panucci, Vieri, all waiting in the penalty area for this free kick. And it was a flick from Panucci. Well, the goalkeeper's lucky in many senses, Rob, simply because it goes straight at him. It's a great ball and horrible to deal with. The touch is all it's needed. Imagine Lombardo got another touch on it. Uh, there's not a lot tougher else have done reacting to it. Good fortune at one end then for Brazil. How about the other for Roberto Carlos? And it's been just the start that Italy wanted to this game. It took them around six minutes to do what 120 minutes at the Pasadena Rose Bowl three years ago failed to do, which was separate these two teams with a goal. Del Piero, the man who's given Italy the lead. Foul on Di Matteo by Capu. Di Matteo has certainly been in the wars in this tournament, lasted only 15 minutes of the opening match. Yeah, that's clumsy more than anything, this, isn't it? <laughs> Del Piero claiming a foul by Dunga. Leonardo. Here's Mauro Silva. All players ahead of him. Ronaldo, one of them, quick on the turn against Cannavaro, and off the post, it deflected. It's a corner. Oh, he was brilliant, yeah, honestly. Cannavaro stuck to him like glue for the majority of this game, but his movement and his speed, watch the way he just spins off him and he's away. Uses his strength, and then again, Costa Curta, in that sweeper position, comes over and gets a touch on. It could easily have gone in. Leonardo with a corner. Brazil hoping to make the most of this good spell of pressure. Celio Silva arrived beyond him to Romario. Cross again towards Ronaldo. Cannavaro saw a bit more of it that time. And the break on here for Del Piero. Two Brazilian defenders tracking back. He's going to have to do it all on his own. Vieri has come forward now. He brought plenty of Brazilian defenders back with him. Vieri <laughs> just unable to work it through for Baggio, but it was a handball. see the Italian version of Roberto Carlos. It's Albertini! Dimitrio Albertini has 
Brazil were still trying to organise themselves, caught them absolutely cold. Well, I'm not so sure if that took a deflection or not. It certainly moved an awful lot. But this time, I don't think it was the bend in the ball alone. Tafarel, who was trying to organise his wall, just taking completely, they're a little bit sloppy. He certainly thumps it. Aldair, there's the culprit. And that's probably gone well, well wide. And if you don't buy a ticket, you don't win a raffle. That's off block by Lombardo. This is Aldair. Well read by uh, Atilio Lombardo. The game on here, I tell you. The Italians have, have dug in the last five minutes. Strung along the edge of that 18-yard box. Oh, it was a bit harsh, I thought, that decision. So you don't think the Brazilians are out of it? I know. <laughs> Listen, I think there was a Spanish cup tie. Was it a cup final and 3 0 down Barcelona at half time? And a certain young man wearing number 20 or number 9 out there, they're not just got a hat back in the second half and they won it. No, they're not out there. The Italians are, they are in the league of their own when they have to do this. Camp in their own penalty area, around the 18 yard box, get bodies, get tight, spoil it, make it difficult. Danielson. Weave a bit of magic, and he has at least earned the reward of a corner. And you're going to have to see the Brazilian at their best to get back in it as you open them up. A breakthrough before half time wouldn't go down too badly, and it's in. Roberto Carlos's shot deflected in by Lombardo, and Brazil reduced the deficit. Uh, just when you talk about a team, how well they do, they just go to sleep on the corner. To be fair to Brazil, they take it really quickly. Get the ball down, get it back in play. Uh, the second deflection of the night. I'm not so sure if Pagluca would have gotten to it, but Lombardo's right leg just snakes out, whether it was going even wider the goal. But it certainly contributes a great deal to Brazil being back in the match. Leonardo with Baggio at his back. And that's Celio Silva's ball. They've got to keep it the Italians when they have it. At 2-0, I think they were quite happy to sit back and invite pressure. I think at 2-1, it's not the best plan. I think they've still got to go forward themselves. They've got to try and keep a little bit more position. They've been long spells in this half without the ball. Brazil uh, instructing their moves very patiently. It was a culprit. He just made no move to get out of the way. Dunga. Well, another ambitious effort. Not too far wide. But they're looking around a little bit in that central area. Di Matteo, Albertini, Baggio looking around, seeing who's going to get a little bit of help. To be fair to Baggio, he's followed Leonardo the whole of the first half, and he's, he's done that ever so well. But it has left Di Matteo and Albertini a little bit exposed against the other three at times. Leonardo. Italy actually looking to try and make a change before the half-time break. Diego Fuser, who came on in the opening match for Di Matteo, ready to come on again. Well, that's Baggio, who's kind of slowly walking out over this way. I don't know whether it's him. Must have a bit of a problem. I don't know why on earth would he be making a substitution with what less than 10 seconds of the first half to go. 
It is Baggio, he looks like he's almost packed ahead. He's just truck walking over now. Well, there goes the half-time whistle, so the change hasn't been made, will be in the second half. Del Piero started off the goal scoring as the Juventus partnership immediately reaped dividends. It was Vieri's cross and Del Piero's header. But then it was two more deflections. Albertini's free kick knocked in by Aldier, which established the lead still further. And then Roberto Carlos having his say again. That one deflected in by Lombardo. Just looking around, Rob, to, and we know Fuzier has come on for Baggio, but there's a number 18 there just from Brazil. Yes, Cesar Sampaio is uh, oh, he's won, coming on. He's coming back off. <laughs> is he staying on? Three, six, no, he's got to stay off. <laughs> got ten outfield players on there already. <laughs> well, they've decided well. We'll give them uh, 15 minutes, see if they can turn it around, maybe. So certainly Zé Maria was uh, warming up during the break, aside from the rest of the pack, so uh, presumably Mario Zagallo is pondering one or two changes, putting a bit of pressure on the uh, existing players out there. Del Piero with the early bit of uh, sabre-rattling in this second half, the man who scored the opening goal in the first half. Well, 10 seconds in, and that ball over the top again, then one of the channels. Del Piero gets in quite comfortably. It's funny when you get the stats, you and I get a load of stats here in France at half-time, both Roberto Carlos's goal and Albertini's goal being regarded as shots off target. It would be on goals in Italy, that's a certainty. <laughs> Aldair and Attilio Lombardo will be making no great claims to them. Dunga. That was short for Aldair, and thankfully for him, Del Piero couldn't quite get there. Ronaldo spinning away, was hoping for the ball from Romario, but it was uh, heavy traffic ahead. I'm amazed they took that quick. That's right in Roberto Carlos' range. Took it quickly and gave it away. There's Albertini, whose free kick was diverted in by Aldair. And Aldair again intervening, but there was an offside flag up against Christian Vieri. It just drifts, it's tight. It's very, very close. Well, those are the kind of decisions that you, know, you want to see just let go. It was a tight decision. And Filippo Inzaghi, whom uh, Juventus announced that they've signed from uh, Atalanta is uh, warming up. There he is again. Who's last man again there, Rob? Mauro Silva. Oh, quite right to hit it. He had the option of Ronaldo, many might have slipped the young lad in, but not Danielson. On his left foot, struck it beautifully. This is more encouraging, Roberto Carlos. Oh, that, not one for the scrapbook. Well, this is a lovely move, that's Romario. See what I mean, he comes off and suddenly sparked the first time in the match. And Nielsen thinks, I fancy a bit of this. It's a good save from Pagluca. It's close to him, it's high. We'd expect the goalkeeper to get there, but it was struck with some force. High on the ball, strikes it beautifully. Good save. This is Denilson. Albaier lucky to get there, but Maldini was in ahead of him. Great defending. Absolutely top class. Great run from Danielson again. He really looked excellent today. I've been really impressed with this young man's performance. That was a super ball in a really dangerous area. For Mario, Roberto Carlos. Dunga. This is Danielson. Slipped away neatly from Fuser. Is he going to go all the way through? Oh, what a goal that would have been! Oh, I'm 
was up. I'm sorry, I was up there. You almost wanted it to be. <laughs> I, was, I did. I was up. God blame it. You wouldn't have got me back down for a while, Rob. You'd have had to carry on. Well, just singing his praises a minute ago, but he has excited me tonight, I'll tell you. Great running, great feet. He just wanted that to go in. I don't care who you are. Only an Italian fan didn't want this going in. Wonderful football. You think he's lost his balance once or twice. Controlling that ball. Now he just wants it to bend the other way. Oh, dear. You'd have been Great. in orbit, wouldn't you? Ah, I'd have been up the roof somewhere. Just talking about the uh, mural that's uh, in the place of the South Stand, showing the uh, football immortals. Five of them are Brazilian. And... Uh, Danielson would certainly have written a little piece of history for himself had that goal gone in and would have been another one to add to the Roberto Carlos one to watch again and again. Aldair. Romario. Nice turn away from Panucci. Leonardo to his right, Ronaldo to his left. And maybe he picked the wrong option. There's no maybe about it. Leonardo was the ball earlier. At least three or four seconds earlier. And this time Del Piero could be in. Down in the area, no kick given. Well, that's a penalty. <laughs> I have to say. That's a very generous decision from the referee on behalf of the Brazilians, I think. And Mauro Silva was the player who went in and might consider himself fortunate to have got away with that. Brazil off the hook. And that's lively now, this. Maldini clashing head on with Dunga but really the Italians feeling very aggressive. This is it, he slips past Mauro Silva well if that's not a penalty I don't know what is this is much ado but nothing really that one and the earlier move, Romario that's why if you were playing with him you wouldn't have to give him a flea in his ear I don't care how good he is Inzaghi Del Piero moving in from the far post he was tucked down was he by Aldair just been a case there of uh, I didn't give it last time I better give it this time I think that's less of a penalty than the last one he's running out and running out that's, that's slight contact there's a tangle of legs I think the defenders a little unlucky but he gets a penalty given there I think Inzaghi made the most of it but I think they do deserve it after being denied earlier with Del Piero Justice has evened itself out, but whatever, it gives Italy a great opportunity to set the seal on this game. Del Piero, who started the scoring off against Claudio Taparel. It's Del Piero! And have the Italians, who lost on penalties to Brazil in the World Cup final three years ago, won this one on a penalty. Well, they dispatched that with some aplomb, didn't they? Confidently, arrogantly, almost. Never looked like he was going to do anything but score there, Del Piero, as he strode up to the ball. Focused on it. Drilled it in top corner. Good stuff. Second goal of the game for Alessandro. Del Piero firmly hits. Taparel beaten, all ends up. We've been uh, able to admire their artistry and their efforts and endeavour. I'm sure that uh, that won't be fully appreciated back in Rio if the uh, result stays this way. You know, the same applies wherever you are in the world, Rob. It doesn't quite wash when you say we played well, but we didn't win. Here's Flavio. Well, I've got some players that can hit the ball, haven't they? Here's another one. I'd be surprised to Paul Yuka. Good goalkeeping, got himself a great position, stepped out to the edge of the six-yard box. That at the angle. Shot was a screamer. Roberto Carlos with a corner that uh, gone out. It's out. First time that's happened for him in the tournoi. Gives us a chance though. So have a little look at this. What a strike. Drags it up to his left, hits it in an instant. Look at the goalkeeper's position. Brilliant. Great hit. Again, I 
think he's happy it's within range. Let me get another couple of feet to the right there. Romario. Well, he looked to go through on his own, and he's won the corner. Brazil batting against the clock, looking for this recovery. Capu, Dunga, Roberto Carlos. Looking to slip Ronaldo through. Well, that's the revival first, is on. That's the first little glimpse of that man's talent. He's got great feet and unbelievable acceleration there. He didn't quite, I mean, it's, it shows you scuffing them in is as good as drilling them in. Didn't quite hit it as sure as well as he wanted. But once again, Mark and Cannavaro, I think, gets on wrong side of him, which he hasn't done often tonight. Bag Luke has not, well, he's got the best. Goes with it with his legs, but he just digs inside. Cross Costa Curta. Yeah, scuffs it a little. Just wrong foot's a goalkeeper, maybe. And Ronaldo, the man who is likely to be playing his club football in Italy next season with Inter Milan scores against Italy. And continues that uh, excellent scoring tally that he's got. 22nd appearance, 14 goals at international level. And Brazil to get back in control of their own destiny. Roberto Carlos pulled it across and Cannavaro had to be on his guard there against Ronaldo again. Well, they all gave it up. Everybody except Roberto Carlos gave it up. And had they not, somebody might have just been nodding in the equaliser. Uh, what a 20 minutes or so we've got now. Every time you write the Brazilians off, they manage to find a way back through and their patience very often pays off. Amazing. There's Cannavaro, just got on the wrong side, got on the outside of Ronaldo for about the first time. He does wrong foot the goalkeeper, he's expecting it to go to his left as we see it there. Maybe bending across him, he gets wrong footed. He can do nothing at the ball, just agonisingly, slowly drill, going past him. Leonardo. And now Roberto Carlos is through, chance for the equaliser! it again. Here's Cafu. This side are ragged at the moment. Actually, just don't know what to do. And Brazil, sensing that, are really going for the jugular. The only thing they can hope to do is get it forward because they're as strong as they look going forward, they look as shaky at the back. Strike. I thought he delayed it too long. I was thinking, go on, hit it, hit it. Hit it. Here's Di Matteo. And he's tried to play in Zaghi through! And you almost wondered... Old, old, after all that Brazilian pressure, their defence capitulating was going to happen again. Must even attempt a shot from here. He's four yards at an angle. That's well almost under it. It's a shot at the other end. I mean... And even though it's right above the goalkeeper, he can't move his arms quick enough to get anything on it. A pity, I think they've deserved something from this game. Del Piero's corner, headed away by Sidio Silva. Ronaldo. Brazil certainly deserves something from this game. England praying that they'll get it. Another goal for Brazil. If the score stays that way, then England have won the tournoi. Here's Del Piero. Did it initially, but Roberto Carlos concedes the corner. <laughs> how do you organise? I was just thinking, how can you possibly organise a defence to play against this team? You pick up him, son, you run with him, you go with him. No chance. You've just got to get men back, try and fill spaces. It's Del Piero's kick. Inzaghi. Ambitious, he's always under pressure from Cafu. Italy with 
six more minutes in which to hang on and the uh, three goals that they've rattled up in this game, their first three goals in the tournoi will do them uh, no harm at all if it comes down to uh, goals scored in the duel with England. Said first half, the greatest attack in the world against well, the greatest defence. They get a little bit of luck, but who's to say they don't deserve it? Again, it's into the big man, he holds it up. There's a little bit of feet going, but I think Ronaldo spots him there. And he just gets enough on it to squeeze it through a couple of defenders. And from then on, well, it's all about Romario. Not want to be phased, not want to panic in a situation like that. Skips past Pan Luca as if he's even there. Look at that, there's a little dummy. Goalkeeper buys it, hook, line and sinker. The question is, can they win it? Well, twice they faced a two-goal deficit and now they've finally drawn level for the first time since the goal started going in. Romario, who's had such an ineffective uh, tournament, in terms of the first match and the first hour of this match, but suddenly he's exploded into life at the right time. And that defending in depth that the Italians have been doing has suddenly backfired on them. I don't think they can do anything about it. I think Brazil at 3-1 down just said, right, well, set, we've got to go for it. And I think that's exactly what they did. They pushed two full-backs right forward. They asked Mauro Silva, then Dunga, after he went off, just to sit in with the two centre-backs. And then they said to everybody else, oh, you're all attackers, every one of you. Well, Italy trying now to save their own blushes. Del Piero's free kick. Well, you can only admire the resolve of this Brazilian team. Really have stuck to their guns, never phased. When they were 2-0 down, when they were 3-1 down, just kept plugging away. Ronaldo found the ball at the right time to get Romario through for the equaliser. And what a mouth-watering prospect. Tuesday's now beginning to look. Of course, uh, in terms of the tournoi, that uh, goal from Romario was the one that England wanted. Is it going to stay this way, though? Or are Brazil going to get a winner? Leonardo. Great chance here! Oh, what a chance. Aldair it was who had the opening. Uh, he opted to place it in the corner. How they would have loved that chance to have dropped to, well, one of half a dozen other players. Flavio and the Nielsen get a game on Tuesday. <laughs> Not bad. And England have won the Tournoi de France. But the story here is of a remarkable revival after Alessandro Del Piero had seemingly given Italy an unassailable position. It was a foul on Inzaghi by Aldair which gave Italy a penalty that was firmly tucked away by Del Piero for his second goal of the match. But they hadn't banked on the spectacular Brazilian revival initially through Ronaldo and then through Ronaldo's creativity in setting up Romario to have the final say. Brazil never knew when they were being written off, brought about that excellent revival, and it's finished here in Lyon. Brazil 3, Italy 3.